off. Hello, my name is Brad Bodnerchuk, and welcome to the Half a Dozen Hospitality Podcast, where we discuss everything hospitality, from the food on the plate to the teams that make it happen, and the community that drives this industry forward. On this podcast, we sit down and chat with the most exciting, inspiring, and innovative minds that make up one of the most dynamic industries that there is today. And today, I have the pleasure of being joined by none other than John Swinsky. Should I say Jonathan? Uh, it's, I'm indifferent. What I've been you, called many things in my life. What do you prefer? But not, uh, what do you prefer? I, I mean, I mean, we're friends, so John is, yeah. John is perfectly fine. If yeah. you want to be more formal, Jonathan Swinsky, welcome to the show, sir. Thank you. Thanks. It's been it's been um, a while that you and I have been trying to arrange this, and yeah. those those that do know do know you know that you have a very demanding. Uh, travel schedule so you're in and out of the city like a rock star yeah I mean in, in part part I'd probably do it to myself a little bit but yeah <laughs> so for the for the for the few people um, that are listening that don't know you because yeah. I'm assuming majority of this world knows who you are That's, I hope <laughs> <laughs> if they don't they're, if they if they don't they're about to so help the world understand who John Splinsky is and what you do, but not only what you do, why you do what you do. And then I'll add in kind of like how you and I came to kind of know each other and why I feel like you're here today, but For explain sure. to the listeners kind of who you are and what you do and why you do what you do. Okay. Well, I mean, I wear a couple hats right now. I mean, uh, what pays the bills is a, a company that, that I started, um, um, back actually while, while we were working side by side. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, not not in the same bar in the in, in different establishments, but uh, it's called uh, Sovereign Canada, uh, and it's a it's an agency, a liquor agency that imports uh, a whole bunch of different independent spirits, uh, mostly on premise focused, um, and mostly from uh, categories that are that are fairly underrepresented. So, like mezcal, pisco, cachaça, um, you know, different cocktail bitters, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and, uh, so that, that keeps me on the go a lot, uh, cause in, in Canada, um, you know, we don't have a huge population, so you really have to, um, you know, take advantage of the entire country. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's only, it's only 35 million of us in this country. Um, so, so that has me on the go a lot. Um, just because of some of my, uh, experience and, uh, you know, a lot of my privilege actually, uh, growing up as a bartender, um, when and, and where I did, uh, I've been involved with a lot of different mentorship uh, programs and a lot of apprentice programs, including Tales of the Cocktail Cap mm-hmm. program, and you know by extension a lot of other you know programs around the world like you know SACC and 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 Lush Life and Camp Rodemack and a lot of that stuff is contract work as well, and so that keeps me on the on on the go, and it's great you get to meet and. Uh, learn about a whole bunch of different hospitality cultures around the world, mm-hmm. uh, which is very cool. Yeah. Um, every time I go to a new town um, and you know do a, a bunch of event management, uh, I get to 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 learn a lot more about um, people from not just locally but from uh, from all over the place. And it feels like that that uh, that pool, that talent pool around the world, is expanding. Mm-hmm. So that that's pretty cool. Uh, and then finally, I, I'm the, the corporate liaison for the Bartenders Association in Canada. <coughs> Pardon me, the, the, there's no cough button. Uh, <laughs> there's no uh, cough button. Yeah, no. <laughs> what kind of setup is this? Uh, <laughs> We're in my so, kitchen, dude. <laughs> yeah, I know. Hey, you know what? We all start somewhere. I got a few stories about starting off. Um, but uh, yeah, so I'm the corporate liaison for the, the Canadian Professional Bartenders Association. And, and um, uh, you know, I, our, our goal, um, it's, it's all volunteer work. Our goal mm. is to help foster community growth uh, and ma- make sure we're creating a, a platform for younger bartenders to, to have more opportunities and, and to succeed and to express themselves in a, in a professional manner. There, so there's a lot there to unpack. One thing, <laughs> one, <laughs> one thing that I think, um, and I don't know if I've, ever, if I've ever articulated this to you, but one thing I, I really respect that you do, John, is you seem to offer a very... Um, democratic position and idea of like what hospitality is and because you're exposed to so many different environments and cultures around uh, the globe arguably and what you've been exposed to and something that I was intrigued by and I forget even what it was that I post or posted or I wrote it about I wrote about part of me a few weeks ago and it was kind of it had the feelings of it was really kind of brushing the entire hospitality industry with one brush which maybe isn't appropriate. And you were like, well, maybe it maybe in Canada, but maybe not everywhere else. So the, what, I, what I want to unpack here is 
what have you seen and experienced outside of let's say North America mm -hmm. that you feel like is like really progressive and they're doing something different as far as hospitality, not just with drink, but with food as well. And even just the culture piece, where do you feel like that is really thriving? And when you visit those places, you're like, wow, they are doing it so right here. Wow. Uh, well, for, first of all, I do remember what, what we were what talking about. What was the context? Um, well, I think you, you had posited a question. Is is ego killing the mm, hospitality yes, industry? Yes, 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 yes. Um, and I was thinking about that this morning because I was wondering if you were going to ask me about that. Um, um, so, I mean, to answer your question first, um, you know, um, I'm, I'm such a glass half full kind of person. I, I kind of take a lot of positives away <laughs> from... from um, from every single market that I visit, mostly because I I'm kind of have these rose tinted glasses. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> where where you know you know you should see me judging cocktail cons. Everything's amazing. <laughs> Everyone gets a ribbon. Yeah, the Everyone. worst food critic. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> it's like that mayonnaise that, is amazing. Yeah, it's like oh my god, how did you do? Let me taste that. I want to know, right? So it's, so uh, yeah, so uh, I pro probably why I get invited to these things a lot. Um. <laughs> um so, you know, I think every every single market is offering their unique thing. And I think the markets that, that end up having the most success are the ones that um, have some, some originality to them and um, uh, have their own personality and, and are not trying to replicate other markets, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, I think when, when, you, when you're traveling and you go to a place that's new, you, you don't want to see something that's, that's, you know, cookie cutter, you know, control X, control V, you right. know, yeah. you know, into, <laughs> yeah. sorry, Mac users, <laughs> but, uh, but you know, you, you want to, you want to see something that that's original and that, that, in, that inspires you because they, they came up, came up with it, with it themselves. Um, you know, I'll, I'll give you an example. I went to a bar in, um, uh, Winnipeg a few years ago. Mm hmm would never have thought of it. It was, it's called uh Sioux soul. Okay. Um, and, um, it's, uh, it's in a commercial, it's a low rise commercial building that has like, a, you know, uh, a masseuse and a dentist and a, and a, right. you know, a law, legal <laughs> office and stuff like that. And you go into the back and, um, um, you know, it's, it's a basement suite. Uh, and, and on the front it says, uh, you know, Vandalay Industries. Are you, are you serious? <laughs> I'm serious. Oh, yeah. amazing. Yeah, exactly. Right. Amazing. Right. So all of a sudden I'm, I'm like, I'm excited because it doesn't matter what the it's, cocktails it's already, taste like. It's already I'm, exceeded you're, expectations. You've already, yeah. It's already <laughs> exceeded expectations. Right. That's amazing. <laughs> so yes, you go down and, and there's a, you know, a lot of, uh, um, you know, they're, they're, they're really good at taking the piss and, you know, they're, they're not good at, you know, necessarily publicizing it. Mm -hmm. Um, but they're, you know, <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's a real, that, that, that place is great actually. In so, so, so you were that's one example. You were surprised that something in, in a city that maybe isn't nationally or even globally looked at as like a progressive yeah. you never hear like ooh, go check out the cocktail programs in winnipeg yeah i mean i think it's just important to 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 never forget that that you know a lot of people have a lot of unique ideas mm -hmm. um and some of those ideas work work better when they're around larger markets because they they need exposure you know like let, let, let's give an example um if you want to start a cocktail bar that does not have a menu Right, like it's a dealer's choice only place. Okay, there's so few places that you can do that that will actually, you, you where you can actually pull it off, mm -hmm. right? Because you need this kind of innate understanding from the marketplace, you know, and this this kind of cultural acceptance, right? And so, you know, if I want to start that idea, maybe Vancouver isn't the right place to do it. Maybe where, somewhere where else. Where would is. where would that exist? I think you need to like, specifically to that, and you know, I know we're kind of going off on a tangent yeah. a little bit. Um, but I guess that's what podcasts. That's do. what it's all about. <laughs> we got we got an hour. I mean, we got yeah. an hour to kill here. Yeah. <laughs> um, speaking, of, you know, s specifically to that concept, it, you know, and it's just w what I've, you know, as someone who's more observant, I suppose, uh, or, or has kind of like this more pragmatic view of of the hospitality industry. You you need to do something like that in larger media markets, um, where you can where you you have a lot of walk-in traffic so that um, there's this kind of echo chamber that mm. exists where, you know, like, hey, have you checked out this spot? Oh, yeah. this is the new secret spot, right? Because right? if you're having to worry, uh, you know, about butts and seats, mm. right, that might not necessarily be the best concept because people could get frustrated and, and, and walk out. We've seen those concepts happen in Vancouver and, and, and the the – the drinking crowd and the dining crowd didn't really understand it. And I think it, it so it didn't work. 
Um, and also the media couldn't kind of figure out a way to get behind it. But when you go to larger markets like New York or London and, or, or, or e- even Toronto, you know, where there's mm-hmm. a lot of, there's a lot of people, you know, you can have every single kind of bar that exists. Right. Right. And so to circle back around and talk about, you know, this, this idea that, of these, uh, this '90s sitcom themed cocktail bar, and when you go into that bar, you know behind the bar is the is it's it's hilarious. All the bar tools are hung up like the um, the the tool board from Home Improvement. Like, oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, Like it's a really clever. Like there's a whole bunch of night. It's not. You oh, know, so it's there's not, a, there's it's not a mural. Just it's not no, just Seinfeld. it's not just Seinfeld. There's a mural. Uh, that's there with uh, a whole bunch of uh, 1990s upper deck uh, NHL hockey rookie cards. Oh, wow. It's really, it's really quite a, it's a cool place. And I'm just talking about this one place, but you know, you you have to, uh, you know, keep your head up and on a swivel, as they say. Uh, it's a very Canadian thing to say. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, but you never know. You you can poke your head in and 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 kind of check out all these places and all, and all these different ideas that people have. And I think. You know, um, who's doing it more white, right from a macro perspective? Um, I do think that, you know, markets like London and Singapore have this competitive advantage Mm -hmm. in a sense because they're, they're, they're already starting from the second level because they have this, this cocktail culture that exists where a lot of people are like, you know, even Vancouver to a smaller extent, you know, it's like, Hey, you know what? Let's go out for drinks. I know what cocktails are. Mm-hmm. But you, you, you really have to play to the market a little bit. So, you know, you know, to, to, to my point, you know, the, you know, this bar in Winnipeg, mm-hmm. right? Well, that's a way of getting people in through the doors, right? Cause it, yeah. it, cause in a sense, doesn't matter what the cocktails taste like at that point, you're having a good time and that's where it starts. Right. Yeah. So do you, going back to that question that you were thinking about again this morning that I posted on Facebook, where, where, what is your stance on that? Can we unpack that? So, yeah, for sure. So, so the, the article, the blog that I wrote was basically me, me asking and posing the question. And just so we're clear, I'm very much a rose colored glasses guy as well. It's just a lot of the... Didn't w- seem to be in that post. <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny how people interpret that, right? Oh, I, I'm fascinated by it. I mean, that's a whole different other podcast like the, where like, people like... <laughs> just like they unpack things and they define things. Like, dude, that's not where I was going, the, but okay. I know, but like the ability for the general public to catastrophize things is it yes, blows my exactly. mind. Exactly. <laughs> like, oh my God, Brad <laughs> hates the hospitality. Oh wait, did you hear? Brad, you know, and it's... <laughs> he I thinks mean, restaurants gotta, suck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> did you hear this? Do you see that? Yeah, actually, people, I was at a cocktail cup yesterday. People were talking about this half a dozen... <laughs> You know, it was really pushing the envelope here. <laughs> so the, the question I was posing is like, our ego is holding the industry back. And, and there's so many different spokes from this wheel that we could discuss. Yeah. But let's just leave it at that statement. What do you feel? And, and you, your comment was, and I'm paraphrasing, of course, is something along the lines of, well, it's really difficult to say like holistically it's holding the industry back. Like let's talk geographically perhaps. And I'm, I'm guessing that's where you were going. Yeah, for Please sure. I, I guess I, I do, I do see this kind of, you know, I mean, intersectional is not the right word cause it means something else, but this kind of, um, you know, the, the, this, uh, there, there's many moving parts, yes. right. And it's very hard to make these kind of giant sweeping statements. And the more I 100%. travel, um, and, and the more I experience the hospitality industry and I'm very, priv- very, very lucky, very privileged, very grateful to do that. The more I realize that it's, that's far more complex than that. Um, l- let's take the, the idea of ego for a second and, and think that, well, you know, you have to, you have to have some self-confidence mm-hmm. and a bit of like self aggrandization as well. Great word. In, 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 in order to have, you know, in order to, to even do this, to even do this, right? Like yeah. you have to believe it, you know, and I keep, um, you know, you know, you're a sports guy and I'm a huge sports yes. guy. Like a lot of my life is, yeah. you know, if you think about like a tennis player, right? I mean, you have to be, have, have that kind of je ne sais quoi uh-huh. in order to be successful. Mm-hmm. Right. And so I, I do think that, that in that sense, Ego can actually be a positive thing when it's wielded in a, in a, in a positive way, uh, so long as it's creating more spaces for other ideas and other people to uh, to flourish. One hundred percent, right? And so I think that 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 and it's and and then ego is kind of like an easy target, like plastic straws in a sense, right? Yeah, Where yeah, it's totally. it's, yeah. like, it's like here's what's wrong with things. Ego. I'm like, well, what does that actually mean? <laughs> That's such a nebulous thing to say. It is very right. Nebulous. Yeah. <laughs> so so um you know and but at the at uh, you know at the end of the day I think. Um, where ego can draw you back is when, when it, um, you know, these communities that kind of get mean girls nice to each other, right? Mm-hmm. Um, the, 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 you know, especially in Canada or at least smaller markets, 
you know, the rising tide lifts all boats. Love it. Um, and, and if you're not thinking that way, um, you, you might not be seeing the forest through the trees because the, look at our community, for example, in Vancouver, one of the reasons why we became so successful so quickly is because we had this kind of virtual, this, this bulletin board of ideas. We were trading ideas, not just with each other, but, but with other parts of the, the, the hospitality sector, like, like the kitchen, Mm -hmm. we'd go into the kitchen and ask chefs, uh, uh, what to do and, Pardon me, we that cough button. We, <laughs> we 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 had humility, right? And and mm-hmm. um and, and I think having humility and saying I don't know is 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 really important. Where ego gets in the way is all of a sudden, hey, you know, this person is um you know holier than thou, and and um you know they they are dictating and creating the narrative um for for what the market is like, um and then and then that that's when ego gets in the way where we kind of lionize some mm-hmm. of these bar stars or whatever or put them on a pedestal and i can tell you from experience at the very 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 high ends of the the industry you know i had a last night on sunday i had you know a very 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 prominent you know global bartender in town um with me an older guy um and um you know we went to a few different bars and um you know there was a, some fangirling that was happening yeah. um uh, but at the end of the day they just stopped and listened to him and and he was just another guy just yeah. a regular guy and, and we work in the hospitality business you know and you have to be hospitable in mm-hmm. order to get ahead and yeah that's the part where ego kind of gets like remember what we're doing here the exactly. idea is to be nice mm-hmm. you know <laughs> but do you so do you think there is a uh def- up here. yeah go for it do you think there yeah. is a uh you're all good yeah there is a defined difference between um, the communities that exist front of house and back of house. And I say front of house, I'm talking just like bartending, yeah. cocktailing, that kind of thing. And the reason I bring that up is because I had asked uh, Alex or Alec Black yeah. when he was on a few weeks ago mm-hmm. about silos. Because I, I found in my experience in the industry when I, when I worked in the space and now doing consulting work that there are a lot of these walls that are put up mm-hmm. with, with predominantly, and this is a very general statement yeah, for I get sure that. i mean you can't with how chefs. do you you know how do you move forward unless you kind of you know put things into a box I guess. so so but but is is bartending and cocktailing in that world different it feels like when what, what alec was saying was like that he feels like there's more of a sharing mentality whereas like hey this is something i just learned here have it and take it whereas i feel like with chefs they're less inclined or even if they do share it's kind of within the term you used earlier, like their echo chamber of like, yeah. we're in this, this is our crew. That's your crew. Do you know what I mean? Do I, you- I do know what you mean. And, and again, you know, and I, I don't mean to, the, to be the, for this to be a cop out, but it really depends where you are. And, 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 and even, in, you know, even where you are matters less than who's driving the conversation. Mm-hmm. Right. Because, you know, again, we're super lucky here in Vancouver. We're in Vancouver right now. Mm-hmm. And, and I grew up in the, in the Vancouver hospitality community. I mean, Vancouver has, is, is noted globally for, for doing an excellent job of, of sharing ideas. Um, you know, if we go back to the, the Tiki cocktail era in the United States that was born out of California in the, in, you know, in, in the mid 20th century, I mean, secrecy was the name of the game, right? right? Like right. you didn't know what was in Don Beach's <laughs> uh, syrups or, or, uh, uh, Trader Vic's syrups. I mean, they, you know, they, they were, they hated each other. That was, you know, they're an opposite, se- you know, sides of the spectrum mm-hmm. and they, and, and the Tiki movement came out, out the other side kind of just, just fine. But, you know, I mean, I think, you know, if they, something like that happened now, it might not necessarily be, you know, looked upon the same way. Um, where I think I'm not sure I necessarily, I'm not sure I agree with that statement. Okay. Um, because I, I do, I do think that it, it, it is kind of like a more of a snapshot of place and time and, and who's driving the conversation. Yep, that's fair. I, I think when, you know, um, Noma, um, which is, yeah. uh, in, in Copenhagen, um, uh, today actually a, a, a colleague of mine, um, from Saskatoon, uh, a chef from Saskatoon is, um, is on her way to Noma. Uh, to the do stage? a stage. Oh wow! Um, and Noma is is, a, is a, an example of a uh, of an establishment which is very very famous for sharing mm-hmm. all this information. Actually, my former you know uh, f- former sous chef, the guy I opened, one of the guys I opened Hawksworth with. He's mm-hmm. he's written a famous book. His name is yeah. David Silber, right? Yeah. On, on on the art of fermentation, right? Yeah. I mean that that doesn't which is crazy, right? He's well, he's had an incredible. I'm so happy yeah, for him. Which which is you a know? whole again a yeah. whole podcast. Like why why did he have to go there for that to happen? Well, it's funny that you say that because, you know, it is another podcast, but at the same time, you know, it is relatable to all, 
sectors of the hospitality industry. We, we do this thing called spirited sessions. My company does, Sovereign does every, every single month. Um, and because we've grown, we've actually had to take it from market to market across Canada because we are a national company. And, and we just did one in Edmonton and, and uh, we talked about um, how to get ahead in small markets and how to create platforms for yourself in smaller markets mm -hmm. um, so that you'd have these, you know, kind of more global opportunities. Um, and, you know, we had a really lucky, it was a, it was a wonderful week in Edmonton. We had uh, a bartender from Halifax, a bartender from Saskatoon, a bartender from Winnipeg and a, and a bar and a bartender from Edmonton on the panel uh, and, and oh, talked cool. about this. And these, these were very, four very prominent bartenders. And in part why we did it is to make sure that they had this, had the stage as well. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Um, so, so, you know, and we talked about, you know, there is a way to get ahead in smaller markets. In a sense, Canada is a smaller market that is getting ahead. Yeah. Um, you know, we have 8% of the population of the United States. There's more people in California than Canada. <laughs> know, people forget crazy. that stuff sometimes, right? It's, it's absolutely so, insane. So we, we, we are good at getting ahead. Um, we just, we have our own, we have our own way of, of doing it. So I do think that, and you know, even Copenhagen, even Denmark is a small market, right? Yeah. Where, you know, so if you build it, they will come. Uh, I, yeah. I, I really, I really do believe that. And um, I think, I think Denmark and Copenhagen is, is a fantastic yeah. example of that. And speaking with some local talent here and one person I will call out, uh, Jefferson Alvarez, yeah. he, he thinks, he thinks we have, if not the same, more opportunity here with our terroir, what we can, what we can do than what they've done I in agree. Copenhagen. But it's just, why are we not having that conversation? Why is it not being done? It's something I posted uh, a few days ago was about like, do you want to stay relevant or do you want to create art? And that came from a conversation I heard uh, the, the guys from the Black Keys having with Joe Rogan. And I was just completely intrigued by how they were saying like, the, by staying relevant, we're not actually doing anything for the industry. People that stay relevant just kind of do their thing and then they're gone. I'm paraphrasing again. Yeah. But were, his point was like people like Tom Waits, sure, he sold a bunch of albums, but he was never doing like commercial pop music. Yeah. And Tom Waits has gone on to influence thousands of artists and probably got a lot of people to come out of their, you know, out of their dorm rooms with guitars or pianos and like try to create art. So let's talk about that for a bit. Do we need, do we need in Canada, for example, mm -hmm. the market that you and I know more intimately, do we need to be pushing the boundaries more like places like in Winnipeg calling it Vandalay Industries and then <laughs> doing hilarious, different. It's hilarious by the way. It's so good. <laughs> but do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. Do, do, and do these conversations come up with like the panel that you just had? Are people talking about doing more like pushing boundaries and not just doing relevant things? I think it's more, it's, it's more about having a plan. You right. know, like, mm -hmm. and, and, um, you know, okay, well, what are we going to do here? Right. Like it is, is our, is our thing to, you know, be unwavered in our, uh, uh, and, and, and almost, um, stubborn in our approach, you know, mm -hmm. in the Tom Waits kind of way, I'm not changing. If you don't like it, <laughs> screw yourself. Right. Like, yeah. and, and that works sometimes. Right. And it works if you have charm and you're likable and you have a character, you know, behind exactly. you. And yeah. there's a few different people in our industry that are like that. And, and there, there's, you know, you, we, we look at them with, you know, kind of fawning or, <laughs> um, you know, you know, kind eyes. Right. Yeah. Because that's just how they are. And I wouldn't change them for the world. <laughs> exactly. Right. And so that, so, but you, do, you know, but at the same time, you know, if you aren't, you know, constantly on being, you know, on the, on the, on the cutting edge, um, I do think that you kind of, um, you, you can, you can run yourself in, into circles and you can, you can become less relevant because if you're, if your shtick is, Hey, well, you know, let's, let's, you know, do everything that's new and the newest thing that's out there. And then you aren't doing something new. Mm. Right. And then your next door neighbor is you, you, you have a, you have an identity problem on your head. So, you know, how, that, that identity is more important, I think, uh, than any, than anything else. And it's something that, that people forget about a lot in this industry. There's a lot of room for people to express themselves. You just uh -huh. have to choose one thing. Totally. And, and, um, to, you know, to the earlier point, um, you know, <laughs> to circle around with ego, you know, sometimes in, in Canada, uh, you know, and, and what Jefferson said was, is, is sort of true in some sense, like, 
okay, well, you know, we're not very good at having bravado, right? Like we're too, like we're, we're, too, so we're too Canadian. We're too Canadian about <laughs> yeah. it, right? And then the other thing is, is, is we have this Canadian, you know, way of thinking where, you know, it's the old joke. Uh, uh, a Canadian drives down the, the the street and sees a mansion on a hill and says, "Oh, how did that person get the mansion? You know, who did they screw to get it?" <laughs> yeah. Right? And the American drives down the street and sees that mansion on the hill and they say, "Oh my goodness, there's a mansion on the hill. If I work really hard, one day I can have one." Right? And it's you know. <laughs> We have that kind of mindset sometimes where, where, where we, um, you know, we beat ourselves. Uh, mm-hmm. and that, that's what I mean by ego can, can be um, a, a good thing, so long as it's coupled with, with humility. But, you know, having this kind of clear, concise plan, which is so funny because we're being so verbose right now. Yes, <laughs> no, I know. But yeah. having this like 140 character or less kind of plan yeah. and sticking to that plan, I, I think, you know, keeping it simple helps yield um, some really um, uh, incredible results mm-hmm. because then people understand and then they will follow you. Because in Canada, we, we want to support each other totally. more than anything else, more than any product or restaurant. Yeah. We're, so, we're, we're very good at, we buy people in this country. Mm-hmm. We don't buy things, we buy people. Yeah, 100%. Can we talk about a plan then? Because that's something that, yeah. again, um, having Jefferson in my social circle has been a blessing because he's, I, I feel like he's such a brilliant mind when it comes to food and he knows so yeah. many people like he, like he's, he's shared bread with Rene Rizepi. He right. know, he knows these people and has had conversations with them. And one thing that he's shared with me and the way he describes what they did with Noma, what they did with Copenhagen is mm-hmm. Rene decided, I'm talking like I know him, uh, chef you, Rene. You and Rene, yeah, you and Rene, yeah. Uh, yeah. Rene, Rene de- Rennie, you call him, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you play drop in hockey with him sometimes, don't you? <laughs> Once or Tuesday nights at 10. Yeah, Tuesday nights at 10. At eight rinks, yeah. <laughs> um, what Jefferson said was, Rene was the one that was willing to stand up and say, look, let's get in, let's get together in a room, yeah. a proverbial room and say like, what, what are we doing? Where are we going? Yeah. What is our North yeah. Star? So it sounds to me like those conversations are happening through the sovereign Canada, those, those conversations that, sure. that you're providing and giving that platform to, do you hear those happening as well within the chef community or the restaurateur community? Uh, y- yes. Um, y- yes, I do. Um, I'm not in touch with the chef and restaurant community as much as, uh, many others are just because of my circle, uh, mm-hmm. as much as I used to be, right. um, I'm definitely more in touch with the, with the drink side of things. Um, but, uh, you know, I, they're like-minded people seem to find each other. And so mm. in some sense, I might not be the necessarily the best person to ask because I'm always looking out for those people anyway. Right. <laughs> so, so, so what, if you can share with listeners and what yeah. is the North star right now for the cocktail program that Canada is like, Hey guys, coast to coast to coast. This is what we want to be doing. We want to obviously, we want to influence each other. We want to share, we want to educate, we want to show the world what we can do, but let's all focus on these top three things or this one thing what is the priority what is the, the number plan? one is it, it, it right now is hospitality i think we're, we're getting back to the hey you know what you can google all these drinks you know like at the end of the day you know it's not you know cocktails are 95 percent about this is 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 about hospitality and um uh you know the the, the cocktails having excellent cocktails that's the bare minimum Mm-hmm. to bring to the table mm-hmm. right um you know there, there's many there's a thousand ways to skin a cat on on not an excellent cocktail menu yeah. right so i do think that's number one number number two i do do really think it's identity as well and making sure that that um you know we're filling the, the white spaces mm-hmm. the voids right like what 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 can i do in this market that hasn't been done really close friend a, a, a mutual friend of ours actually look at uh, what sean lane has just yeah. done with como, como right Shout out como. Like, exactly yeah. yeah i mean como you know it's like what what can be done that hasn't been done that you have a passion about right you will always succeed because people see that a hundred percent you know they, they want to invest in you yeah. exa- very yeah. palpable exactly yeah. right so um so so there's that um and then and then i think no, um, number three is is making is simplifying cocktails in a sense so that that they're a little more approachable uh, um and and they're also staying on topic uh it's it's kind of this odd like all news is old news sort of thing mm-hmm. where, um, you know, the media are writing about things that we're doing, but at the same time, the media are enforcing or like reinforcing right. the things that, <laughs> that we're doing. So I guess we're going to keep doing the same thing, right? right. I, I'm super lucky as, as the company, our company brings in more mezcal, um, actually Mexican independent mezcal in Canada, like not, not the contract American stuff, mm-hmm. the Mexican stuff, um, than any other company in Canada. 
right? Well, wow. well, well which is great, right? Um, you know, it, it's very difficult to, very difficult thing to do, and yes. not. And I assure you, it's not profitable. Um, <laughs> so but, don't uh, do it. <laughs> so yeah, I can't advise necessarily. Yeah, it's not for the weak heart. But at the same time, you know, we're, we've been propped up by this. Um, you know, this this. You know the bartenders can't get enough mezcal, mm -hmm. and um, the media can't stop writing about mezcal. And then, and, and then the bartenders were like, "Okay, well, we love mezcal, so we're just going to keep drinking mezcal." Mm -hmm. um, and now we're now we're here. You can't, you almost can't have a cocktail menu Without that doesn't mezcal. have a mezcal cocktail in it, right? Like yeah. you know, because otherwise it's like, what do you know about cocktails? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Where's the mezcal? Where, where's the mezcal cocktail? You call this a cocktail bar? You know, like so. So you know, uh, trying to go from there is always a a, a challenge uh, in in in, 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 in itself, right? But uh, did you have you know, foresight with that? Because I remember literally, literally, I remember. I don't know if you remember this. One of the last times, and this is I, I'm ashamed to say, it's one of the last times we actually like were like warm blooded face to face. Oh, was I'm... was like years ago, literally years ago, dude. And we were by Pigeon. Uh, pigeon restaurant here in mm -hmm. vancouver and you had a bottle great restaurant by the way yeah great Un restaurant. unheralded unheralded uh if you are local and you haven't been yeah. please get in if you're yeah. visiting vancouver put it on your list yeah. of places you have to go to yeah. uh, i'm assuming still a great cocktail program yeah. and the yeah. food program is it's unreal fantastic. and there's a beautiful room as well yeah. anyways we were we were outside of pigeon and you had in your hand uh a bottle of mezcal and at the time i still i was kind of like edging towards no longer drinking so it wasn't really right. my jam but you were really excited about it so i was wondering did you see this happening like did you have that moment where you're like you know what we're gonna double down and be like the guys with this or <laughs> it's just like the, right place right time the the uh more, more the latter than the former um the story of of how sovereign started is kind of funny and, and our very first brand was uh you know shameless plug was uh los siete misterios yes um which is now um, it, it's actually a mezcal brand that was literally built by Canadian bartenders. It was in Canada before it really had any presence in Mexico City. Oh, really? Yeah, a lot of people don't know that, right? Um, oh, okay. It's it's the most. It's you talk about how small markets can do big things. Yep. I think propping uh, a, a Mexican independent um, business like Siete Mysterios that's not American owned or financed, right? And say, hey, you, there's space for you too. Can, Canadians did a good job on that. Um, you know, I met those guys while I was taking a jog around the seawall. Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> wow. And, uh, I, 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 I jogged around the seawall. Um, and, uh, I live, you know, my house is, you know, box in the sky is false Creek East. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, I was jogging and, and I got to Olympic village and I, I popped into legacy for some reason. Cause I just, what's what I do. Yeah. Um, and um this was um this is actually before i can't remember who was who was still there i think this was before daryl lamb was actually even there oh wow this is like a long time ago um, so this was a long time those of you that don't know legacy is a, yeah, a sorry is yeah. a private liquor store here in vancouver yeah. it's arguably one of the largest yeah. and most beautiful shout out legacy yeah um and no. it's right literally right on the water yeah. in olympic village so yeah i mean this is i guess this should not be a vancouver podcast this should be an international no. podcast but we yeah, are so this we is are private. we are reaching yeah. uh i just saw the analytics last week that, uh germany popped up on that's the map important. italy that's fantastic kenya that's good that's i don't, I don't know shout out kenya i know a couple kenyan bartenders <laughs> there you actually go. yeah so i mean maybe go. yeah so well, shout out to all the kenyan bartenders yeah thanks, for the, yeah. thanks for the downloads guys yeah um, uh, sorry you were saying so you stopped into like so, so yeah so I stopped. yeah there we go on a tan it's the ADHD. um <laughs> I heard those bills for that. Now. Um, so yeah, so I stopped on a legacy, legacy, which is a private, you know, liquor store, which is close by to where I live, and and I just I'm all sweaty and stuff like that, and I walk inside, and and uh, Pro Mexico, which is the uh, uh, the the Mexican the, the govern the official government Mexican body, that's a word jumble, yeah, um, that um, that helps uh, uh, finance uh, business abroad, okay. Um, uh, they have uh, uh, put some money into sending some young mezcal producers uh, in, into Western Canada. I think there was a trade show that was happening. And so they just happened to all come together. And, you know, there was, you know, uh, someone from Pro Mexico there um, that was uh, that was showing them around, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, they, you could tell that. There was a there was a business disconnect. Um, they didn't quite understand that that you know you can't sell 
bottles of liquor from your suitcase to them like it doesn't <laughs> out of the you back know, of your even truck, though that yeah. literally that, that was trying there was an attempt at that um and <laughs> you don't know until you try right <laughs> right yeah it's yeah. easier to ask for forgiveness than permission especially in canada uh, exactly right? <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry so, sir yeah. yeah 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 so they so so um and you know and I, and I met a couple guys that were that were there and they were they were around my age and they, they you know they were the silent ninjas in the back they weren't saying anything and i'm like who are right. these guys that aren't saying anything <laughs> uh and then i uh, actually came back the next the next day um and at the time i had a i had a dog right mm-hmm. and i t- took the dog for a walk and i went back in and they were in there as well and they were looking at different products and stuff like that so i reintroduced myself to them and i told them that you know hey i'm i'm working at this restaurant but uh you know i, I helped um you know i've been helping build this this brand jafar i was building jafar yeah. in canada yeah. um you know i want to start off my my own thing you know do you want to have a conversation we did and then we you know to this day we we talk every single day that's amazing <laughs> and uh yeah and so Sieta mysterios is now you know across actually what we were really most proud of is um with Sieta mysterios specifically and by the way i have like 25 brands i right. now right this yeah. was just ground zero and we'll put those in the show notes by the way <laughs> we will no, no, yeah no, definitely I appreciate that yeah um uh last year uh drinks international which is a which is a london uh uk based um uh, publication uh comes uh comes out with um uh, the, the world's top 50 best bars mm-hmm. uh, every year. And they also come up with a, pu- a publication um, called uh, World's Best. Uh, I can't remember the name of it exactly, but it's essentially a top 10 list of what bars and bartenders are using. Um, oh, okay. And um, not this past year, but the year before, actually, there's there's a category called Bartender's Choice Spirits, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and top 10 Bartender's Choice Spirits from around the world. Um, our, our, our sisters and brothers from Del Maguey. Mezcal were, were on there. Amazing. Um, a bunch of brands that are not that are hard to find in, in Canada, like um, uh, Plantation Rum or Maison Ferron, Maison Ferron and Plantation Rum, Tequila Ocho, which shameless plug, we're actually bringing into Canada Shout as well. A, co- a, co- a couple other ones, and Sieta Mysterios popped up on that list as, as number nine. Yeah, uh, globally wow. on, on this giant global publication. And and I remember them like, oh my god, I met these guys on a jog, and they, <laughs> and they didn't know what word they were doing, and we didn't know what we're doing, and yeah. we're, now we're here, and now I'm on your podcast, you know. Yeah. So. Do you uh, are you a, are you a read like a literature? Do you read literature I, at all? I used to, but I I honestly read a lot of spreadsheets. Okay, that's yeah. cool. Uh, the re- the reason I ask is this comes up all the time. I I, I yeah. need to find out a way to get her on the podcast. But Elizabeth Gilbert, she wrote Eat, Pray, Love, and she wrote Big Magic. Yeah, and Big Magic comes up for me all the time. Listening to you tell your story yeah. of jogging on the seawall. <laughs> and meeting these people and Elizabeth Gilbert in Big Magic talks about inspiration how inspiration is a living breathing thing yeah. and when it comes to you you have an opportunity to either engage with it nurture it right. and then follow it through or you're like yeah you know what I met these guys that's cool I'm gonna go jog again yeah. but you decided to like for some reason, I'm gonna go back to Legacy tomorrow. Yeah. I don't know, and then just I kind of had this premonition that they might actually be there for some reason because they, you know, and I was kind of. It's true in hindsight. I was kind of like, oh, I wonder, you know, yeah. I'm inspired by them. You know, I don't know why, but I should go. So, and I, just, I was just reading um, this marketing journal. And the guy was talking about intuition and how he now forces his staff to go on intuition more than data ever before. Right. And he said, "There's there's been more creative work that has come out of intuition and more." changing work for industries that he touches with intuition than data ever will so he's a big believer in like that gut feeling you get when it's about going back into legacy and just see hey are they there are they not and just having this conversation it's, it's a really good point that you bring up though because we we call talk about intuition and i'm i'm I, I used to be like, oh, you know, your gut's just your gut. Go with the data, right? Because right. I have this yeah. science background. But but it's like, hang on a second. Your gut is built on data. Yeah, it's you know, literally you, been, it's been taking, it. yeah, yeah, you've been downloading like, data the whole exactly, time. Exactly, right? So it's like, hang on a second. The reason my gut feels this way is because of prior experience, right? It's a and, response. And, and, and also immersion into the craft that I'm doing, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's more like this kind of predictive ab- ability. Of, well, what, what, would, what would happen if... If I did this, well, you know what? I'm probably more, I'm probably better able to analyze that than most people because mm. simply because of this institutional knowledge the I exposure, have, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And and so, you know, I think for that, that is, it's a very, very valid point. You know, um, I, I encourage my my team, my 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 contracted my contractors to um, to go with their gut mm-hmm. uh, and to know that they will always be backed up. You know, you're, you're um, um, you know, I will, you're my teammate. You know, mm-hmm. I will go to, go, go to war for you and, mm-hmm. um, you know, go, go with your gut. Um, you know, especially in my line of work where I just don't have time to say, Hey, you know, um, 
uh, yeah, I proved this. I proved this. I proved this. I proved this. <laughs> right. right? And just go ahead and do it. Right? right. I'll tell you when you're doing something wrong. <laughs> yeah. Ask for forgiveness <laughs> yeah. later. Yeah. Ask for forgiveness later. But yeah. just go. Just go with your gut. And um, and 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 uh, you know, it's really really good for confidence mm-hmm. as well. And I think it's a it's a really healthy thing. Um, you know the to to create uh and I'm, one of the things I'm driven by is I was very very lucky in life. You know, um, to have this support network that if i took a chance it's okay mm-hmm. right because if, if it failed there's all these people around who are who are supporting me yeah it took me a lot of time to figure out that that is something that is rather unique to the market that i grew up in and where uh, where a lot of other markets don't have that opportunity um it, to the point where almost they have a bit of stockholm syndrome mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. where it's like they and, and i say that in the uh, you know, kind of in a tongue in cheek stance, yes. right? Yeah, yeah. Obviously where it's like, well, you know, this failed. So, you know, I guess I should just expect it to fail. So it's all you can fail. And that, that, that's the part where it's, it's, you know, that's when creativity gets pushed down. It's like, or I have to move, I have to leave this market in order to, you know, in order to succeed, that's yeah. the problem, right? Yeah. The problem is, is where I am. Yeah. Right. Um, so go, going with your gut, it's amazing. Uh, I think they call it being micro ambitious. Okay. You know, like just yeah. keep, you know, keep work very, very, very hard at what's, mm-hmm. what's immediately in front of you. And, um, you know, keep your, you know, keep an eye on the peripherals and you never know what might door, what door might open up, totally. you know, which is the, which is a, a la- long elaborate way of Canadian <laughs> way of saying, uh, you know, eyes, head up and on a swivel. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> St- stick on the ice. Stick on the ice. Keep your stick on the ice. Keep your, you know, go to the net hard. <laughs> right. <laughs> a, a, few, a few weeks ago, some Canadian news dropped that you shared with me that kind of really shifted your yeah. day. And it was, I think, a, a fluctuation in dollar or the, the Canadian bank had just released some news oh, yeah. or something yeah so let's unpack For that sure. a little bit let's unpack how much politics plays into what you're doing oh, I mean, you, you shared tremendous. that you shared that the mezcal isn't necessarily sending you to uh the south of france no. you're on vacation because you're just crushing it as far as you know no, yeah bankroll 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 so how how much is your business um you know motivated or in, affected by what's happening on on the political side of things in our country um wow um you we, know we, we, I, only, we only have an hour <laughs> yeah yeah also um i'm just trying to be canadian and and uh, don't, don't you know. be canadian it's a it's a, yeah. glo- it's a global podcast <laughs> that's very you know what <laughs> i deserve that um yeah um okay i mean there's there's you know i again this this fortune i have of of having a um you know backing up what i do with a living with a with an economics minor um and and a journalism major ha, ha, have been really helpful um deciphering the news mm-hmm. and finding out what is actually news and what's not news cuz right. that's a tough thing to do out there yeah um and then doing the research and understanding that what you're reading you know, might be designed to sell adjacent advertising space more than it is anything else. Mm-hmm. Uh, pe- people forget that it's a job, right? Journalism is a job. You don't get it's paid very well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, politics is a job. It's a really crappy job. Mm. I mean, most people, I'd rather I'd rather find a way to get paid doing a podcast than work as a politician. I mean, oh, it's still a job, God. right? Yeah, totally. So people forget that, 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 that the idea... The idea is to win. It's not necessarily what you believe in, right? It's like a cocktail comp. You're not <laughs> making the best cocktail. All you're doing is appealing to the judges because you're trying to win. And trying you'll to be do relevant. anything to win. Trying to be relevant. Right? Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, <laughs> so we have to remember that paradigm for a second. I think we really, really get lost in, lo- lost in that. And, you know, I, <laughs> for some reason, my, 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 my own social media stuff has kind of gotten a little more um, uh, politi- politically charged only recently because I, I think you know par, par, partisan polit or partisanship is you know you know <laughs> it messes with your head right yeah, yeah. you know um so um the, the what happens on a macro scale is extremely important to me as an independent business owner in Canada that works in a um uh in a forum that is now dominated by multinationals mm-hmm. So if you think when I started my business five, you know, five, six years ago, the Canadian dollar was more or less at parity, right? And so, and lending rates have been very, very low for a long time, mm-hmm. right? So my ability to borrow money, that was easy, but, but, you know, I knew that 
I mean, you know, Canada is a net export country. The, the dollar must, the, it's not sustainable. It, sh- it shouldn't be a parity. So I use, uh, so what I was doing was kind of using a combination of a bit of social capital, but also actual uh, capital to go pay a little, uh, you know, uh, for, for inventory a little bit up front, knowing that the hedge was on the inventory itself. Mm-hmm. Right. So, so, you know, even though, you know, the, the dollar might fail <laughs> um, at the very least that, that, uh, you know, I don't have to, you know, raise prices on my inventory. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was a good idea, but it worked too well because I became inventory rich and cash poor right. uh, really quickly. Uh, and, you know, the, the bartender creed, I suppose, is adjust or die. Mm-hmm. Um, and, <laughs> or I guess that's the creed in anything in life. That's, yeah. Dar- that's Darwinism. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> so if this is not working, you should not repeat it. Yeah. Um, and so, so I learned from that. Um, and, and it made, made it so that, you know, I was constantly looking at what was happening on a macro level, on a nuts and bolts level, more than I was reading the words or, or any, or any article or anything. So, um, yeah, uh, I think, um, now we're, it's tough to see, you know, and again, I, I talk about how lucky, I mean, there's an amount of luck, um, you know, and, and you have to have some grace. We are in a good spot right now, um, and we haven't always been, um, but a lot of the other independent Canadian companies right now, they can't compete against these multinationals that are in our market that have tremendous advertising and promotion budgets mm-hmm. that are paying brand ambassadors, you know, 60 to 80 to a hundred thousand dollars a year plus, you know, travel and expenses, um, that are, that are very happy that, that, that are, that have no problem worrying more about revenue than profit in, in, in this country. And mm-hmm. they're okay losing money because Canada is just a trial balloon market and there's no one here. People forget that there's no one here. Right. Um, so like, Hey, this is just a giant tax expense, Canada. Let's see if it works in Canada. If it works in Canada, mm-hmm. if it works in Canada, it's going to work anywhere. I think there, that, that is, that that's true. Um, and, um, you know, it's, it's hard to see some of these independent, um, companies, Canadian driven companies suffer because of that. And, and, um, you know, we're not, people are out there spending less. Uh, you know, that's why Mm -hmm. you're doing a podcast and I'm, and I'm doing contract work instead of us being both being behind the bar, making six figures a year. Yeah, exactly. Anymore. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's not like the back of the day. Um, (laughs) um, so, so I think that we have to be cognizant of of that, but you know, if I have the ability to help, um, other Canadian businesses that have helped me my entire life, other Canadians that have helped me, um, uh, if I have a way to, you know, to, to, to be a voice and to, um, say, Hey, you know, you can do this. You know, we, you just have to be, we have to be diligent. We have to be pragmatic. We have to be focused. Um, and, uh, we can't get swept up, you know, um, uh, then, then if, if, if I can help create a platform for that, I mean, you know, pay it forward. Right. And yeah. so, uh, that, that, uh, you know, cause I've now, I've realized Brad, like I, I'm, there's of all the things, there's so many things I want to do in life and I'll never be able to do them all, but mm-hmm. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, cause you have to be at peace with that. Cause if not, otherwise you're just going to go crazy. That's true. Right? That's true. <laughs> so, we're, and we're, we will touch on that actually. Yeah. One of the questions that I have that so, I ask all the, all my guests. Yeah. Um, but before we get there, I, I wanted to, go down the whole of hospitality. Yeah. Bit. You mentioned it being kind of the North star right now, the number for one sure. for what, uh, what the cocktail programming should be and is being, is in Canada right now. And something that you mentioned stand now, by the way. Yeah. yeah? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah. And then just adjust your mic, just pull it up. Yeah. There you go. Keep going. Keep going. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. can go more. Right. Yeah. Go more. Just straighten that. Yeah. Just push that elbow. Oh, not that much. That's all right. So that has to go back down in. Just bear with us here, guys. Sorry. John just just broke Screwed things. Everything up. Uh, there we go. Yeah, you good? Is there? That okay. It's yeah. not really in there, but we'll see how long it stays. <laughs> <laughs> um, you you were talking about how like having a great cocktail program isn't enough. Yeah. You have to now like take care of and look after your guests. That's my yeah. paraphrasing. And something that ages ago, Eric Pateman of Edelpa Canada mm-hmm. was on the podcast and he was saying how... Eric's great, by the way. Yeah, shout yeah. out Eric. He does yeah. amazing things, especially for for our uh, national industry. Agreed. Like he's yeah. doing, he's going, to, he's going to bat for really putting Canada on the map. So yeah. uh, support Eric and all of yeah, his projects. Um, so Eric was saying, look, I can cook a great meal at home. Mm-hmm. When I go out, I want to be taken care of. Mm-hmm. And that to me was just such a simple yet 
loud statement about where the industry needs to be going and taking yeah. care of its guests. So how do you yourself, if you are speaking on behalf of, just to put a little pressure on you, behalf of uh, your side of the industry, how do you define hospitality? What is taking care of guests? What is the cocktail being great isn't enough? I mean, I think I understand that um, um, when you're having a good time, your food and drink tastes better. Mm-hmm. You know, start there. Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I I always think to myself when I was serving or bartending and I'm like, I'm going to find out a minimum of three things about personal things mm-hmm. about the guests that I'm serving. Right. And e- even when I was, you know, uh, I've done some management before a limited amount. I think that's something I would encourage. It's like, hey, what's that person's favorite color? Right? Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. stuff like that. Right. Yeah. And, and even if you didn't know, like it's like I'm not mad that you don't know. I'm just trying to kind of like change your paradigm a little bit. Totally. Right? Like, yeah, because if you know what their favorite color is, you might think, I mean, if it's green, you might, you know, treat them with a month you know crumb to month uh, yeah exactly <laughs> something goofy they, yeah you know at the end that you know from our bin end cupboard that we're you know some rep gave us right because yeah. we can't because that's you know and so i think you have to you know you you win on the peripheries that way yeah um so uh and and i, I just it, it doesn't have to be a hard thing and you don't you know it's it can be natural i mean just be you know it's it's better to be kind than right <laughs> so, yeah, my 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 dad my dad always says it comes up on this podcast all the time. Yeah. He always says there's a lot less traffic on the high road, so yeah. take the high road always, yeah, yeah. which can be challenging at times yeah. in our space because hey, we've all had those mm-hmm. guests that come in and you just can't seem to please them. Well, which is you know, and it's like part. And I don't want to say it's part of a game because that's that's dehumanizing. But no, game, you know, I mean, it is a game. It's yeah. like you know, again, the sports analogy. It's like golf, right? Like it's as you're having a great time, <laughs> but you can always shoot better, totally. right? But don't give yourself a hard time if you don't shoot the best because there's another round. Exactly. Right. You know, yeah. next shift. Right. So like you, you, yeah. I think I think that's a. Me- I think that's if you're asking for a message, it's um, be be driven, be be motivated by being kind. I like that. You know, uh, let's talk to like, let's talk to the smalls of John Swinsky because, because I, I just, the personal I, stuff. Yeah. yeah, no, I know not really. <laughs> yeah, I'm, for sure. I'm just, I'm just intrigued. I don't uh, have anything to hide. <laughs> no, no. I, I'm intrigued just to dive into, uh, you are such a big sports fan. Oh yeah. And I feel like right now the time of year. So today oh, the, the actual date is October 1st. This, will, this will go up in two yeah. weeks. Uh, so I'm just intrigued for myself oh, and yeah. for listeners to know favorite time of year. Is it when it's baseball, hockey, football, Oh yeah, is is this the time of year for you, yeah. or is it is it yeah. June, May, June, July? No, or? it's 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 in a sense it's right now. Um, you know, I'm 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 the 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 dumb dumb who made our fiscal year end September 30th. <laughs> <laughs> why would I do that? Yeah, I, all I want to do is watch wild card baseball today, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> I can't because you know, uh, how about them Brewers? Uh, so yeah, no, I'm I'm a massive sports fan. I'm actually, you know, I think I grew up wanting to, you know, like any good Canadian boy, my dream was to play and play professional hockey, right? Right, and I was very driven by that, and it got me to a certain point. Uh, you know, I got to travel a lot because because of that, and then I realized that I was never going to do it, and I should probably back this up with a university degree. <laughs> 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 um, but but uh, uh, you know, I, I learned a lot by by playing team team sports in terms of like what I can take, um, mm-hmm. not just with management, um, but cooperation and, and teamwork. Uh, um, and, um, humility and, um, you know, play for the, play for the, the crest on the front of your Jersey instead of the name on the back kind of totally, thing. Totally. Totally. I think there's so many yeah. great analogies we can pull from sports in business, I but really also do. relationships, yeah, I intimate really do. ones and friendships. I as agree well. with you, you know, totally. like, you know, especially you have a partner, right? You mm-hmm. know, it, it is about, you know, um, I was told recently, I went to a seminar recently where they, the, you know, the, the, the message at the end was invest in communication. Mm, right dude communication and i'm like is huge it's all yeah, i'm trying to hire right now as well by the way shameless shameless yeah. plug where we need to you know we need we need uh, some more portfolio managers um and you know so vocabulary matters and invest in communication and that that is a message where it's like right now if you're good at communication that in microsoft excel if you're good at excel <laughs> if you're good at excel and you're good at communication you're going to be fine <laughs> in life um but yeah i think uh uh, uh your original um, you know, in terms of sports, um, uh, for sure this time, this of, time year, of year, this time of year. So yeah. I, I would, I would be remiss not to ask, um, you, let's just say, for example, you don't have to be on this podcast right now. You don't have to do any year end stuff. You have a day to yourself and your big screen TV. 
There's wild card baseball on. What are you drinking? Oh, um, whatever is the closest bottle to me. <laughs> <laughs> say, um, say for somehow the budget allows for you to for, have an in-house waiter or waitress. What is he or she um, bringing you? I'm, I'm probably drinking sp- either uh, spirits straight, like fascinating spirits straight or, okay. or, or wine. I think, you know, um, uh, I don't actually drink a lot of um, agave spirits in in the fall, even though I think we we've kind of been not uh, pigeonholed's the wrong word, but we we're we're, we're known for agave spirits. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll I'll drink I'll drink other things. Generally, I'll drink things when I'm by myself. I'll drink things that I don't have to think or worry about from a business standpoint. So we you know we don't have wine. Right. And and, uh, and and beer in our portfolio, mm-hmm. so I drink wine and beer when I'm <laughs> okay. locked off. You know if that yeah. makes sense. Is there right? is there a brand that we'd like to acknowledge? Like, is there someone doing something either locally or in California or in Italy? Do you think, like, as far as wine is concerned, you're like these guys are just crushing it? I I think that um, um, I'm I'm fascinated by a lot of these these younger um, garagist style uh, uh vintners from 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 the old world who have taken who have accepted that you know kind of technology modern technology from the new world um is really helping advance the wine industry and mm-hmm. taken that and applied it to their local terroir and i think you know just it goes back to like hey this is an expression of what i think wine should taste like and right. i'm like that's cool man yeah or, or lady or you yeah. know like i think that's that's great um and, and you know i'm such a uh, uh, fierce equality. I don't know what to call it, but like, I really, really believe in, in, in equal representation. And so mm-hmm. oftentimes I'll, 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 I'll find, um, uh, wineries or breweries where, you know, I know that by buying them, I am, I'm supporting, you know, a, a, some, a positive cause. Yeah. Um, like a whether, woman owned or a, yeah. Whether it's female owned or it's minority owned or even yeah. independence owned, or if it's in a, in a place like, um, well, I'll give you an example. Um, uh, you know, uh, I was speaking about this. This was dinner table conversation the other day um, about the, the Pisco industry is, mm-hmm. is in a really bad place right now um, oh, okay. because a lot of people don't. The education is really wacky and, and um, uh, there, there's a fair amount of government corruption that's happening in Pisco. Um, and so I will identify the Pisco's that do not play into that narrative that are trying to push the industry forward. Oh, that's cool, and I will man. drink them. Nice. Um, and, and even if they're not my brands, yeah. um, we do have a Pisco, a Peruvian Pisco brand. Right. Um, but, um, you know, I'll, I'll drink them because I, I do, I do think by giving them more of a voice, mm-hmm. um, you, you know, long term, everyone gets more of a voice. Um, and we do have the ability to impact by voting with our wallet. Dude, it's the most powerful vote that we all have. And yep. a lot of us are privileged to vote more times Extremely, a day than yeah. most. Yes, um, yes. The yeah, fact that sure. you and I will probably have three meals today is mm-hmm. incredible. I think about that. I'm I'm driven. I'm motivated by that. I, mm-hmm. you know, I've lived, you know, I've, I've again, we talk about privilege and, and being grateful. I've, I've been to some areas in the world where they do not get three meals uh, a day and it's, you know, <laughs> It's a, it's, it's an, it's, a it's scary, an awakening, it's a scary right? Reality. It's just yeah. like, you know, what can I do? What, what, what can I do to help make other people's lives? Mexico is a perfect example, yeah. right? I mean, you go, go to, you know, into Oaxaca and there's, there's not, there's not even roads and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Right. And I know by supporting, you know, a tiny little, uh, family producer from Hayekatlan, um, over some, you know, giant corporation that's, that has this kind of industrial facility, mm-hmm. um, that, that, that I, you know, and I don't need to brag to the world about it. No, I just no, do it a, myself, no, right? Man, at, I think at it's home, great. Regardless of what the brand is and, and generally watching sports. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. A lot of sports. I consume a lot of sports. And you know what? It's, it's one thing I'm learning more and more is you need to step into those things. And we, again, we get too Canadian yeah. and we say, I don't want to brag, but it's just like, dude, it's, you're not bragging. And if you didn't say that on this podcast, a lot of people wouldn't understand it now. Wouldn't even know Fair. that that part of that world existed. And oh my God, I can actually make an impact there. Oh, cool. You can. So, yeah. You just got to do the work. And it, it, a lot of people, you just have to actually go out and figure out and talk to the right people. And, mm-hmm. and you know, because, you know, you, you can, cause you can go out there and you can say, hey, okay, well, you, let's take the Mexico examples, right? Well, I'm drinking, I'm drinking mezcal. So, you know, by drinking mezcal, I'm, I'm helping so, invest yeah. in Mexico. Okay, well, hang on a second. Who owns and operates the, the these, these distilleries mm-hmm. or the warehousing or which, who are you? Like, let's yeah. get down to it, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, because there's, if, if there's one thing I know, um, it is everyone is chasing the green dollar 
Yeah, right. There's a, there's and a, and there's uh, a long tail on that kite. It, it, you know, it is uh, it, it is it, it, it is mind boggling to me to see the amount of greenwashing that it, that, that that is happening and um, a, a, a lot and a lot of cultural appropriation that mm. that that, um, you know, in 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 second world and, and uh, thir- third world countries from um, from from the Western world that are saying, hey, buy my brand because I replant agaves well yeah. you're, that's the law you're supposed to do that exactly. right like everyone yeah. does that what, yeah. what 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 else what are you, you know not, what are you not what, telling yeah, us? What, yeah yeah so. yeah so ask questions and you know what ask I, questions you know yeah. what, i don't want to i don't want to uh say this for you but there's gonna be people that are engaged uh sorry not engaged but interested in engaging you and asking yeah. questions so it'd be great to put your contact in the show notes for sure yeah so people can reach Please, out by all means but yeah. before we get there i do have two questions for yeah before i let you go i ask every single person mm-hmm. these exact two questions so you're going to be put on the spot but I know, I know you can do it uh the show as you know is called the half a dozen hospitality podcast so i need from so you yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> so for sex hospitality six, yeah <laughs> got got it <laughs> so i need from you john smolinski aka smoles i yeah. need from you six or half a dozen of your have twos stay with me here something you've experienced in your life oh. that you feel like our listeners have to experience a trip you've taken an album you've listened to a drink you've drank a cocktail you've sipped anything that you have done one to a half a dozen or in your words six, six. one to six things <laughs> <laughs> one to six things you can do one or you can do six of, um, of john swinsky's have twos uh okay um because it's we're on topic, you have to go to Oaxaca. Okay. Um, you you have to go to Oaxaca and, and see firsthand how agave how mezcal is is produced. And I think at that point you will get it. Like you know, you kind of have to see it firsthand. I like that. Um, you you have to go check out. Um, uh, you'll like this one because you're a maritimer. <laughs> you have to go check out the 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 cocktail community and and in um. Uh, uh, the bar scene in Halifax. Shut um, up. Shut it, up it, Halifax. it is, it is, uh, it is inspirational. Uh, you know, those bartenders will give you the shirt off their back, mm-hmm. um, and they know how to make craft cocktails, and they know how to pour your Nolans. You know, like, <laughs> and, it, and, it's, and it's, it's the best, <laughs> yeah, right? Like, it's go. just, it's very happy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, so that's two. Um, uh, you have to. Um, uh, you have to go check out, you know, if, if you're in the hospitality industry, um, you have to go poke your head at, at some of these cocktail conferences. You got to go, go, go down to New Orleans for, for Tales of the Cocktail and, mm-hmm. and, and see what's happening. And, um, you know, don't take it as canon, right? Yeah. But understand that that's a, that there's a subculture there. There's a movie out there called, called Hey Bartender, right? Oh, okay. Some, yeah. So you could, you, you know, if you don't have the budget to go down to New Orleans and yeah. see it firsthand, it's, that, it's, it's an interesting, it's an interesting subculture culture. Like, oh, we'll check uh, that one out. Yeah. Um, so that's three. Um, you, you have to go see a hockey game in Nashville. Oh yeah. Yeah. The yeah, Preds. the Preds. Um, it's it's uh, it's crazy. What's um, going on? Now? I mean, Nashville itself is such Nashville's a cool an amazing, city. One of the most amazing cities on in in North America. Um, but um, you know, uh, if you want to see just for so, so sports, I guess it's, yeah, you can do yeah, that. Yeah, totally. Uh, if you want to see um, how small markets can can wield a big axe in in. Uh, uh, in, in, uh, things that are not, that you would like necessarily non-traditional. like non-traditional yeah. things. Right. Yeah. You know, na- the Nashville predators, yeah. right. Cowboy, like, cowboys and yeah, hockey. Like, yeah. Thought? Well, I mean, you know, aside from Alberta, right. Yeah, like the no, fact totally. that, you know, this is, this is, this is uh Friday night lights and, and, and college town. Yeah. To see them. Yeah. That's incredible. Right. Part of it is, and also part of it down there is, is, is like learning about demographics and, and how location, 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 because the arena down there, Bridgestone, right. Mm-hmm. You know, is at the end of Broadway. Right. And if it wasn't for all these honky fun, super fun honky tonk bars that you that are right outside, it wouldn't be it might yeah. the narrative might be different. Right. Right. As opposed to an arena that's like, you know, like in Ottawa. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. Where it's like, like, where it's like is well, it? I is guess I have to drive an hour to get to this hockey arena. Yeah, it's right. Actually, in no, 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 this is actually like st- downtown and it's part of the. Co- so that's that's cool. cool. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll I mean, I'll stop there because. 
those are just the things that I like I, it. I, that, that yeah. to mind. <laughs> those are really cool. The last question I had yeah. for you, and you kind of mentioned that you have a lot of these, so this should be easy for you, is the half a dozen or six. Yeah. The, <laughs> the, the half a dozen. Baker's dozen. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The half a dozen haven't yet. It's things you haven't experienced in your life. Food related, hospitality related, drink related or not. Yeah, for sure. There's a laundry list there. One is um, one is checking out the hospitality the industry. Um, and, and actually, in a, to be more specific, specific, the coffee culture culture in australia oh yeah i've heard, I've um, yeah. heard amazing things about uh, cafes. I've, I've actually i've never been to i've never been to australia and we um, should go yeah absolutely Let's go. yeah um one is to try and uh eat all the food in japan <laughs> Uh, I've, <laughs> like i'm never like, like just i'm just like gonna actually keep, all the food? yeah like all of like all just eat like i'm just every single yeah i <laughs> uh, just all of it do you um, have the budget and the stomach yeah for that? Well, well i mean these are the things that i'd like to do right, right. yeah, yeah it's true. <laughs> whether i can do them or not yeah. i mean it's you know yeah, it's, it's, i'm motivated by that right? I like I'm, that. Mo- I'm motivated I'm, I'm motivated by uh you know uh, do, doing things um you know that that are, you know i work to play right yeah 100 percent <laughs> so, yeah Okay, so um, all Peru, the food. Per, Peru uh, is another. See, all these are travel, travel related. Yeah, but that's, that's me. Good. Yeah. Uh, Peru. Um, we I do a lot of business in 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 Peru. Uh, um, and uh, we we touched on it briefly. The that the peace the Peru, the pisco industry is in a in a really tough place right now. But I've you know I'd like to go to the Ica Valley and actually like see a lot of this stuff firsthand. I was with a colleague over the weekend who was who was talking about it. Um, let's see. That's that's three. Um, uh, we used to have this, uh, uh, at Hawksworth, uh, back when I was there, we used, used to have this, uh, pre uh, Sazerac that we had okay. on our menu and someone posted about it recently. And I'm like, well, it'd be really nice to be able to afford to drink one of the <laughs> things that I was serving. <laughs> <laughs> what what, so would, what was, would that cost? To, oh, I, guess? I can't, I honestly, I can't remember. Um, you know, I, I want to say around like, uh, it, it was North, I think it was North of a thousand dollars for for a cocktail right if you build it they will you, yeah. you, you can yeah. pull it off you yeah. just need to have education right mm-hmm. you know yeah uh, um and talking about uh hawksworth alum and halifax yeah. talent cooper Tartalo. yeah well i mean it's just cooper's the right person to ask i mean we're, yeah. we're working you know <laughs> cooper the hawksworth you know this is such a tangent this is, this is a good story though like <laughs> um uh, cooper and i were tales of the cocktail uh caps uh together which is the cocktail apprentice program and um it was myself and cooper and and uh, jeff van horn who i was with in, in edmonton uh, uh last week and um uh, Trevor Callies uh, yeah. was 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 uh, amongst them, um, and I, I remember um, the the previous bar manager at Hawksworth coming up to to, to Cooper and I and say, "Hey, we're we're doing this. Do you want to do this?" And Cooper at the time was uh, Mosaic in Halifax, and oh, Mosaic okay. was closing, yeah, right? Yeah. And he had no; he just signed. He's just he's an English he was an English major, yeah, right? Who yeah. who went to SFU, so he was very very good at filling out forms, <laughs> right? Which is half the battle in this industry. I tell I'm in, telling in you, in life, right? Just in life, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And be, that and good at Excel. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and so, so, so he weaseled his way in. Right. And it was, we, him and I really stru- uh, struck it off. Um, and, uh, I remember it's like, I was at Bricks at the, yeah. at the time. Yeah. I'll, I'll go. Will you go? You, you, I'll go if you go. You go if I'll go. I'll go. Okay. Let's do it. <laughs> so, and so, so it was one of those things. And so Cooper, working with Cooper for, for four and a half years, he, and I still talk to him every day, every single day, mostly about sports. Yeah. Um, uh, but, uh, but him and I are extremely close and some of the friendships I developed from, from my time at Hawksworth, uh, uh, was, was incredible specifically with, 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 uh, with Cooper. So, um, and that's why you got, you know, a little Halifax. Yeah. yeah no, up. it's crazy. And, so, and you know what? I think that's, that's probably yeah. a good spot to, to, stop, yeah. to wrap up <laughs> yeah. only, only because I just want to say yeah. I'm so thankful, although you and I don't necessarily break bread or speak every single day. It it's amazing to me the relationships that we forged out of those two addresses oh, yeah. in Yaletown from ten thirteen years ago. It's it's extremely like, impactful. looking at like what Sean on, Sean has gone on to do, even what Cam has done with his career, and like now Mike Beam, like all these relationships and and Bryant and all these people doing some amazing things. All out of those those two addresses. And I feel so lucky and so blessed and so privileged that I get to consider yeah. you someone who's in my social circle. And well, I, sure. I feel so lucky that you were able to come on 
to the podcast today and share your time with me and the listeners. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Oh, any, John. An, any, any time I'm, I'm grateful. You're, you're, you're a great friend. And, uh, in, in, in some way, this is, this is a great way to catch up. And I, yeah. I, I love your having, and, and, and I love your lists and I just feel like they could go on forever. They could, they um, could indeed. but, uh, but you know, I'll, 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 I'll give you one more. I mean, Please it's do. not, it's not just, it's not uh, just re- with regards to, uh, one, one, three, Homer street, we're, 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 which is, and for the listeners out there to create some context, Context is extremely important. Yes. Right. So this yeah. this was a this was one of the very first cocktail uh, bars in in Canada, and um, I, I was working there along with a, a few other you know people who have taken some extremely massive steps in, in our industry, and you were working next door. Mm-hmm. Um, you know we had um, we had Ola Carlson, who's who's now one of the most reputable bartenders in Sweden there during the Olympics. Nico De Soto, Nico De Soto, um, uh, you know, I just you could Google Nico De Soto's accomplishments, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. Got to work with him. Jimmy Boudreau, who who was working next door to us at at, at uh, Blue Water, has opened Cannon in Seattle. Um, yeah, and and uh, he the, the small um, he's he wasn't small screen network, but um, he was one of the very first bloggers and stuff like that to help bring our industry forward. He's he he's responsible for. Um, um, rediscovering countless cocktails, including the Hotel Georgia. Oh, wow. right, which is yeah, oh, wow. um, cool, and and uh, bringing bringing them to light. Um, geez, there's so many wonderful, w- in- incredible bartenders mm-hmm. that that worked out of there. Um, and and even even recently, there, there's a there's a massive um, uh, like legacy. Um, you know, so it's uh, a Bryant Mao. We talked about yeah. Bryant Mao, who's yeah. one of the who's one of the the the, the top palates. Uh, and and it, even if you look at Vancouver as a whole, the, the, the hospitality the, uh, industry, the, the the depth of talent mm-hmm. um, that has come mostly from this camaraderie, yeah, um, and this willingness to share and help and push each other forward mm-hmm. um, has, has has been astounding. And you know, we should we should be proud to be from this uh, part of the world. And yeah, um, yeah, I think that's uh, you know, it's awesome. Yeah, no, we're very, we're very, very lucky. And as you said, one, a bunch of times, we're very privileged as well, oh, so uh, much. to call this so place lucky. home and, and to, so lucky. to have the friends that we have. Yeah. Um, how rich are we? Uh, <laughs> yeah. not necessarily in maybe dollars, but just the people that we know, Agreed. the social capital, as you said, yeah. um, before we officially let you go, if people do want to reach out, how best they get in touch with you or with sovereign, um, well, info at sovereigncanada.com, uh, definitely. Um, uh, or, or myself, John, J O N at sovereigncanada.com. Please, please email me. I might not get to you right away, but, um, someone will, uh, for cool. sure. Um, social media, um, fairly active on it. I, J dot on, on, on Instagram and, and, uh, I don't, I, I should probably use Twitter more than I do, but you know, I'm not, I have, kind have a a, more of a unique name. I, it's, it's, I'm not too hard to find and I, you know, I will, I will respond and, um, uh, yeah, I mean, I love, I love people. I'm, uh, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a social monster. So, <laughs> so, so, so I will, I will always respond at some point. Yeah. So. And, and guys, if you, uh, we will put the contact information yeah. in the show notes and maybe the, the description more about the jobs you're looking to fill the, the positions. Looking For to sure. Fill. So yeah. If you're listening and you're intrigued yeah. by what, uh, John has shared and you think that you could add to his team, uh, shameless plug. Yeah, let's, we let's do. Yeah, we're 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 again talk about uh, being grateful. We are we are one of the very few Canadian independents that's that that's actually growing. And you know, we wouldn't be here without the 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 support that we've received from mm-hmm. the Canadian hospitality community from coast to coast. But, you know, you know, in, when you talk about voting with your wallet, yep. um, when when our products deplete, it gives us the ability to do more things like you know, spirited sessions and uh, you know, um, investing back into children children's charities which we did last week in oh, Edmonton amazing. and, and, oh, and, awesome, and stuff like that and so we want to keep doing that and um you know this is this is your company too in yeah. a sense yeah. um so yeah thank you for all your support canada yeah. and the rest of the world and the rest of the yeah. world as well yeah uh thank you guys so much for tuning in as you do week after week if it wasn't for your support this podcast yeah. would not exist i really do love and appreciate you all that is john i am brad this is the half dozen hospitality six podcast hospitality. <laughs> 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 Every time people hear it now, they're just going to hear six. six oh, yeah, that six out. guy. Yeah, <laughs> are you that six guy? Uh, thank you so much, Smoltz, for coming on the show yeah, again. Thank you, love, guys. yeah, you as well. Uh, <laughs> have a great day, guys. You know what to do. Until next time, be good and do good. That's yeah, it, man. Cheers, man. We did. It. I love you. Oh, okay. yeah. oh, oh. Hey, and I hey, didn't hey, knock the microphone no, down. It stayed the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> it's-